Terminator Genesis has a lot going for it. Well, two things really. People like some of the Terminator films and also Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. Or at the very least, they used to like both of those things. On the other hand, it has a bunch of stuff working against it. For one, the last two Terminator movies weren't very well received. One of the trailers for this movie gave away a massive plot twist. The spelling of Genesis is kind of dumb? And Jai Courtney is considered by many to be the cinematic equivalent of a piece of brown bread. And not just any piece, but like that crust bit on the end that nobody wants, you know what I mean? But regardless, here we are again, the fifth Terminator film and what intends to be the much needed breath of fresh air for the series. The story this time around features a fractured timeline, meaning Sarah Connor, who's destined to give birth to the savior of mankind, is now fully prepared when a Terminator shows up to destroy her in the 80s, like it did in the original film. Because, and here's the twist bit, one of, one of the twists, about a decade prior, that exact same thing had already happened and she was rescued by a reprogrammed Terminator who raised her to be tough and mean and all boys are gross and whatever. So when Kyle Reese, her original protector, arrives from the year 2029, things are very different and then all sorts of new threats emerge in the form of a brand new Terminator who's like, all made of grey sand. The identity of this new Terminator I won't spoil, but if you've seen a trailer for this film or a poster or have ever been on the internet, you probably already know. So the good, okay, I like the idea of an alternate Terminator timeline. This series absolutely lends itself to that kind of storytelling. I also like how it revisits some classic Terminator moments and tweaks them. The Arnold on Arnold fight is particularly good and all the future stuff at the beginning is pretty great. That part is almost like an insight into the events leading up to the beginning of the series, which is fun. On the flip side of that, yeah, this movie is a mess. And if James Cameron truly insists that this is a film of equal calibre to his two, well then he's lost his mind. Firstly, you know how I said I liked the idea of a fractured Terminator timeline? Yeah, well that only works if you do something that improves on the legacy, or at least takes it in a different, interesting direction. But this here, it just flat out erases the better films that came before it. The action sequences are fine, I guess. Like I said, I liked some of the early future stuff. But saying that, a CGI Terminator diving through a CGI helicopter is nowhere near as entertaining as, say, a vicious hand-to-hand -hand Terminator battle in a narrow corridor. Also, why is Kyle Reese so buff? I know it's only a small thing, but Michael Bean played that role perfectly. Physicality included. This is a man who should look like he's been spending his days running around in the dark, eating rats. Not like bloody Captain Crossfit here. And another thing, the Star Trek reboot worked for a number of reasons. One of them being that it doesn't assume prior knowledge of its audience. But if you do have a deeper understanding, then good for you, you'll get more out of it. But here, if you've never seen a Terminator film, I can't imagine you'd have any idea what the hell is going on. And even if you do, you don't have any nostalgic attachments to any of these characters. Plus, a lot of the good stuff in this movie relies on you knowing the previous movies rather well. Because then as an audience member, you can be like, oh yeah, I remember that. I have memories of a thing. Jurassic World. That's another example of how to refresh a franchise. Not a perfect film, no, but again, a good kick in the ass for the series. This though is a kick to both the head and balls. What's really presumptuous about this whole thing is that the idea is that this will pave the way for a new trilogy of Terminator films, which is ridiculous. This is not the bedrock on which you should build your franchise. So yeah, after all that, you're probably not gonna be surprised that this gets a worst movie ever. Now look, it's not terrible, it's just not great, and I can't recommend it despite me liking certain aspects of it. And you know what? I feel like an idiot for thinking, despite all my instincts telling me otherwise, that this might have been a worthy Terminator sequel. But I guess it's better than Salvation, which remains Salvation in name only. Zing. Take that movie from six years ago that everybody hates. Thanks everyone. Now if you liked this, maybe you like this video on worst Terminator moments. Especially if you love a big ranty thing. Or maybe you like this video on something else. Also I have a podcast called The Weekly Planet that covers movies and comics and TV shows. So if you like podcasts, well, this is certainly one of them. All those things I said will be linked below and at the end of this video. What did you think of Terminator Genesis? And I'm curious to know, what do you think is the best film in the series and the worst? I liked three a lot more than four, but I know a lot of people are the other way around. So if you do have any thoughts, please feel free to leave them below. All right, thanks everyone. Take care.